The Salivanov's test is a biochemical test used to detect keto sugars containing at least five carbon atoms in their molecule. The test is also used to distinguish such keto sugars from aldose sugars. The test can detect not only ketose monosaccharides but also disaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides as long as they contain one or more ketose monosaccharide units in their structures. Just to recall, an aldose is a sugar, usually a monosaccharide that has an aldehyde group at one of the terminal carbons. A ketose is a sugar with one ketone group per sugar molecule. Common examples of keto sugars include dihydroxyacetone, erythrulose, ribulose, fructose, cetoheptulose. Aldose sugars include such sugars as glyceraldehyde, erythrose, ribose, arabinose, xylose, glucose, mannose, galactose, etc. The Salivanose test was devised by the Russian chemist Theodore Salivanov in 1887. This test makes use of the Salivanov's reagent to identify whether a given sample contains a ketose. The reagent is a mixture of resorcinol and concentrated hydrochloric acid. You can also check out my video on how to prepare the reagent by clicking on the link given in the screen right now or the link given in the description below. The Salivanov's test is based on the principle that ketose sugars are most rapidly dehydrated than aldose sugars by the acid present in the Selivanov's reagent. Therefore, just like the Barfoud's test, the Selivanov's test also exploits the difference in reaction time as the major factor to help distinguish between ketosis and aldosis. In the case of ketose monosaccharides present in a sample, they directly undergo triple dehydration to yield the 5-carbon furfural or its derivative. Each furfural unit or furan derivative then reacts with two parts of resorcinol in a series of condensation reactions to finally yield a deep cherry red xanthinoid condensation product. In the case of disaccharide and polysaccharide sugars containing ketose monosaccharide units, they first undergo acid hydrolysis to yield monosaccharide ketose units, which then undergo a series of dehydration and condensation to finally yield the colored product, just as in ketose monosaccharides. Sucrose, for example, is a disaccharide containing glucose and fructose monosaccharide units. Since fructose is a ketose monosaccharide, sucrose gives a positive Selivanov's test as a result of the acid hydrolysis of sucrose by the reagent and subsequent dehydrations and condensation reactions of the fructose component. Aldo sugars also give a positive test, but the reaction is much more slower and they give a light pink color instead of deep red. This is generally considered a negative result. Ketotriosis and ketotetrosis do not have the necessary 5-carbon atom for furfural formation, so they are not expected to give a positive result for this reaction. To know more about why aldo sugars react slower than keto sugars, click on the link to a research paper that I have attached in the description below. In this video, we'll be demonstrating a positive and a negative Selivanov's test on ketos and aldo sugar samples. For this experiment, we'll need the following. Selivanov's reagent. Do check out my short video on how to prepare this reagent by clicking on the link given in the screen right now or the link given in the description below. Sugar samples consisting of a 1% solution of fructose as an example of ketose monosaccharide, a 1% solution of sucrose as a representative example of disaccharide and polysaccharide sugars containing ketose monosaccharide units, a 1% solution of glucose as an example of an aldose sugar, and finally a control sample of distilled water, four clean dry identical test tubes, test tube holder, test tube stand, water bath, five graduated droppers or pipettes of 1 or 2 ml capacities. To begin the test, take the four labeled test tubes in the test tube stand. Add 2 ml each of Selivanov's reagent to the test tubes. Now using four different pipettes or droppers, Add 1 ml each of the fructose, sucrose, and glucose samples and 1 ml of distilled water to the corresponding labeled tubes. The fourth test tube with distilled water will act as the negative control for this test. Now keep the test tubes in a water bath for one minute or so. 
Observe the appearance of color or the lack thereof in the tubes and note down the time taken for the colors, if any, to develop in the tubes. The test tube containing the ketose monosaccharide fructose is the first to change to a cherry red color within a few minutes, followed closely by the second test tube containing the sucrose, which took extra time for the acid hydrolysis of sucrose into its component monosaccharides, glucose and fructose, of which the ketose sugar fructose participates in the Seluanov's reaction to form the cherry red complex. This is still considered positive test. The third tube containing the aldo sugar glucose took a even longer time of more than 10 minutes to show a very faint pink color, as can be seen here. This distinguishes it from the ketose sugars that show deep red color reactions. The control tube, as expected, shows no significant change in the color of its contents and only retains the original reagent color, which is a faint yellow. This is all about the Seluanov's test for keto sugars. Do check out my other biochemical test videos and my Seluanov's reagent preparation video as well by clicking on the end screen card shown on the screen right now or the many links given in the description below. Thanks for watching.